Welcome from the Arkansas Department of Education Office of Gifted and Talented and Advanced Placement. I want to introduce our team. I am Mary Catherine Stein, the Program Director. Crystal Nail is our Program Advisor. Connie Story is a Program Advisor and Danielle Holliday is our Administrative Assistant. We extend a warm welcome to all those viewing the presentation and we extend a special welcome to those who are new GT coordinators and teachers. We're excited about the start of this new school year and about getting to see and talk with many of you throughout the year. First and foremost, we are all here as advocates for gifted students. The role of our office is to ensure students receive gifted services and the information we are sharing is to help you as you deliver services to these students. Please do not hesitate to contact our office if you have questions. Our mission is to support you in your work and providing information is essential to supporting you. We will either provide an answer or do the research needed to answer your questions if it is possible to do so. Many of you are veterans in gifted and talented education and have heard the information before, but some of you are in a new role and we want you to feel comfortable in delivering services. If you have questions about anything we present, please use the Zoom meeting later today to ask for clarification or call or email us if you have questions during the school year. You also have a wonderful resource for information in the GT Specialist at the Education Service Cooperatives. They do a wonderful job in sharing out information and helping districts provide services to gifted students. A special thanks from our office to the GT Specialist. We have spent time trying to find ways to make your job easier on the reporting side through online forms because we want you to be able to devote as much time as possible to serving students. On the other hand, it is very important to document and evaluate services to students. Data is essential for advocacy and unless services are documented, they might not exist. A review of the State of the States report prepared jointly by the National Association for Gifted Children and the Council of State Directors of Programs for the Gifted indicates Arkansas is a front runner in providing services to gifted students. Please be an advocate for gifted education by sharing the great things we're doing in our state in providing gifted and talented services, knowing there is always room for goal setting and improvement. Advocacy for services to gifted students is crucial in today's atmosphere and you will want to prepare yourself to advocate for your students. The National Association for Gifted Children is our national advocacy organization. Attending the annual NAGC conference in November is a great way to learn more about educating students with gifts and talents so you can become a better advocate for them. Here's the link to the NAGC website where you can learn more about the conference this fall and about other resources on the NAGC website. Our state advocacy group is Arkansans for Gifted and Talented Education and here is the AGAT website information. AGAT is a state affiliate of NAGC. Make plans now to attend the annual spring AGAT conference. There will be more specific information about AGAT during the Zoom meeting later. If you are the GT coordinator for your school district, you are a GT administrator. Here is the website for the Arkansas Association of Educational Administrators, AAEA. The Arkansas Association of Gifted Education Administrators is one of the constituency groups of AAEA the one specifically for gifted educators. AAGEA typically holds a conference each fall. There will be information about the fall conference in the Zoom meeting. I encourage all new GT coordinators to attend the new coordinators training which is offered as part of the annual fall AGEA conference. It is essential in the information chain for everyone to have your correct contact information and for us to have correct contact information for the people in the roles listed on the slide. Please email our office if there are any changes in personnel in the roles of GT coordinator, AP coordinator, superintendent, or high school principals so we can stay in contact with you and these groups. 
I know some of this information is in your program approval application, but the sooner we get the changes, the sooner we can make changes to be sure you get updates and other important information. Concerning important information, there's a wealth of information on the GT webpage of the Arkansas Department of Education website. First, let's go to the ADE website. At the top of the screen, you will see a picture of our Commissioner of Education, Mr. Johnny Key. Below his picture are tabs for various audiences that frequently seek educational information, including teachers, parents, and administrators. You can reach the GT webpage by clicking on the letter G in the alphabet across the page, or you can scroll down to the section of popular and helpful links and GT and AP is to the right under the Services for Students links. While we are on the home page, notice that there are many links to other helpful topics such as the tests and leads links. Under must reads, there are links to commissioner's memos. Commissioner's memos are the beginning point for many processes. Below the must reads, you will find the ADE data link. When you click on the link, you'll see a redesigned web page. Scrolling down, you will find the student dashboard. GT coordinators will want to have access to the student dashboard, which can provide some data needed for identification purposes. If you click on online forms, you will find a login screen that requires your trying name and password. When you enter the information, you will find a list of online forms, including gifted and talented program approval and the AP Expenditure Report. If you click on the Parents tab at the top of the ADE homepage, you will also find a link to the GT and AP webpage. The GT and AP webpage contains a great deal of information that you will need from time to time. On the left and middle of the page, you will see the state definition of gifted and talented and links to our Arkansas GT laws. There is also a link to Frequently Asked Questions, which is information many people want about gifted services in the state when they search the site. In the center section, there is information about Arkansas Governor's School, the Advisory Council for Gifted and Talented, and a posting of the current Act 56 winners for outstanding programs. There are links to the GT web pages for each educational service cooperative where you can find GEMS which are the quarterly newsletters for each co-op. On the right side of the page, you will find a list of links to the other units in the Learning Services Division listed under Learning Services. Scrolling down, you'll find the heading Related Links, which includes links to tutorials for each of the three types of GT program approval applications. A link to NAGC, the National Association for Gifted Children, AP exam dates, and the AP course audit site. Further down, under the heading Related Files, are links to a chart listing the pre-AP and AP trainings available at the Advanced Placement Summer Institutes for the next three years to help in planning for teacher training, and links about adding GT licensure, the GT Technical Assistance Guide, and visiting cycles help in completing a PGP for a GT teacher and links to the PDF form for a pre-AP or AP additional training plan and the frameworks for GT seminar class. We try to have everything you may need in an easy to find location, but if you need anything else or have questions, please let us know. If you have worked with the online GT program approval application before, you will recognize the next slide. It is the screen you will see when you open your form using your try-in password. Be sure to click New Form so this year's form will come up. There are links to tutorials from the GT webpage about each type of GT approval application if you would like a more in-depth look at the applications. You also have access to PDF copies of your district's archived applications for reference. The GT program approval application forms are different depending on your district's place in the technical assistance visit cycle. The first two screens of the online application will look the same for everyone. 
If your district is being visited this year or was visited last year or will be visited next year, you will have different screens to complete. The first screen of any application asks you to add or revise the data about district personnel. Below that section, you are asked to indicate the licensure status of the GT coordinator for the district. Most GT coordinators, even if you are a district administrator, hold the 289, 305, or 306 licensure codes. If you are on an additional licensure plan, be sure you upload the file of the actual ALP document to the application in the place provided. The first screen includes a very important change box where you will want to indicate any changes from your last application for approval concerning the meeting of requirements for any GT standard. For example, if there have been GT personnel changes, be sure to include the person's name as it appears on their teaching license and the last four digits of their social security number so their licensure can be verified. Changes in pre-AP or AP staff do not need to be entered. If your schedule has changed significantly or a program option has been changed, add that information to the box. Below the Changes box is a box labeled ADE Comments. In interacting with you about approving your program application, we will put comments and questions to indicate items that need revision or clarification. Please don't try to answer questions or provide information in the ADE box because while you can type in the box, your responses will not be saved. We can't make changes in your boxes and you can't make changes in the ADE boxes. At the bottom of the screen is a status box and below that a box marked Save. Be sure to save each screen before you click the next box or you will lose your work. Each section of the online form is approved separately and there is a summary screen when you hit Next after the last screen. The program seems to work better when you go through the screens consecutively rather than hopping around. You can put placeholder responses in boxes to move through the screens and return to complete the responses before submitting the form. The second screen, which everyone completes, is the record of GT services for your district. The ADE comments box is near the top of the page on this screen. As you add information about your program options, a chart is built that includes what the program service options are for each grade level, how many students are identified, how many minutes of weekly service are provided, what content areas are addressed, who provides the service, and what documentation exists of services. Services may be provided by more than one type of teacher. Services that are provided by more than one teacher or service that is not delivered weekly can be described in the box provided. Be sure to include all the types of service and the types of teachers providing the services for each grade level to prevent double counting the students. Note that the numbers in the chart are for identified students. Please don't record the number of students in whole group enrichment, for example. If a student was identified and served under program options such as acceleration, there would be an entry for that program option in addition to an entry for whole group enrichment for that grade level. Expect that there will be back and forth on the form before you receive approval. It's not a contest to be perfect and first. We often have to ask questions to clarify what you have said, so be patient because our goal is to help you get approval for your program. We are providing technical assistance to you. You and your superintendent will receive automated emails each time you submit your application and when the application is approved. The applications provide a time for coordinators and districts to reflect on the services being provided and they provide a record when questions arise. The archived forms provide a history of your program with data you can easily access. One special reminder is that you are required to do evaluations of your program each year and keep documentation of annual evaluations for review during on-site technical assistance visits. You do not have to evaluate each program option or stakeholder group each year, 
but you need to do some program evaluation each year and you need to have data about each program option and feedback from all stakeholder groups for the evaluation year of the application cycle. In the evaluation year of the cycle, you will do a summary report of the accumulated evaluation data and set new goals based on the accumulated evaluations. The time frame allows for the collection of data from all stakeholder groups about your program options. Districts may set new program goals whenever their annual data indicates a need. Program goals should also reflect the recommendations made during technical assistance visits. I encourage you to share information about the program application process with your superintendent who has access to the application as a reminder about the district's GT program and to avoid surprises about receiving emails regarding the application. When you complete all the screens and hit Save and Next, you will see a summary screen with a Submit button. When you hit that button, it generates an email telling us you have submitted your GT application. When feedback is ready about your application, you and your superintendent will get an email to alert you to changes that need to be made. When the application has been approved, you and your superintendent will also get emails indicating approval. While we are talking about things online, I encourage you to put the information about your GT program policies, forms, referrals for services, evaluation data on the school district website so it's easy for the public to access. If that information is not a click away from the district website, GT doesn't appear to be a K-12 program, which it should be in every district. Hi, this is Crystal Nail. I'm here to share with you more about technical assistance visits for your gifted and talented program. Initial notification of the dates and times of your visit are sent from whoever will be visiting the district via an email to the gifted and talented coordinator and the superintendent. If you're receiving a technical assistance visit, then you'll receive this initial email by September 1st. It's critical that our office has updated contact information for any new personnel and email addresses for superintendents and GT coordinators so that we will be able to contact them for this purpose and with future correspondence. Please send this information as soon as possible because we will be sending a second email about technical assistance visits to GT coordinators and superintendents of districts receiving these visits during the current school year in September. These emails will be sent to you from whoever will monitor your district. Written procedures, plans, policies, or other documents verifying compliance with program approval standards that can be reviewed in advance of the visit are submitted as part of the online program approval application for districts that are receiving a technical assistance visit during the current school year. If you are receiving a visit, please submit your online program approval application at least three weeks prior to your visit. Earlier submissions are accepted and encouraged. There are tutorials available on the Gifted and Talented page of the ADE website that provide assistance in completing this and each of the other online program approval applications. This submission of policies and procedures as part of the online program approval application has been a great help in working on policy and procedural issues that could have been compliance issues for districts, but instead were able to be resolved before the conclusion of the visit and in most cases, before we ever arrived on site for the visit. Please know that many program approval applications require us to ask a clarifying question or for there to be some revision to a policy or practice to ensure clear compliance with program approval standards. If you're ever unsure about what we need, please don't hesitate to call or email us. We will clearly label all responses in program approval applications as compliance issue, revisions needed, comment, or suggestion so that it will be clear if it must be changed for approval, which would be labeled as a compliance issue or revision needed, or if it's a suggestion, which might be labeled comment or suggestion. Please know that when we receive program approval applications through the online system, especially if it's a district that's in the group that is receiving a technical assistance visit in the current school year, we try to respond in as timely a manner as possible. Please note that we try to complete all technical assistance visits between October and February. 
There are periods during that time when we will be mostly out of the office due to visits and other commitments, or you may be out of school between submission dates and technical assistance visit dates due to breaks. So we encourage early submissions so that we can work to get all your materials approved well in advance of your visits. The online application format with the submission of these materials helps us to be able to spend more time on site focusing on learning about the specifics of your programs and to be able to highlight the areas of your program that shine as well as provide specific guidance regarding your program. Districts that will receive a technical assistance visit will receive an agenda for the visit in an email. The agenda provides a guideline for our time with you and can be adjusted as needed depending on the situation. For example, it may take longer for reviewing on-site documentation. If there are students, teachers, or administrators that you'd like for us to visit, just let us know. We hope to be able to make some visits with students and in classrooms while we are with you. As part of the agenda document that districts will receive, we included some suggestions for you to consider that may help the visit flow more smoothly. As we've visited many districts, we've seen lots of different ways to organize documentation that work. So if you have a system that works for you, don't feel like you have to change it. One of the biggest and most important things to remember is the first thing on the list. We are there to support you and your program. A technical assistance visit guide is available on the GT page of the ADE website and will also be sent to re districts receiving visits. Standards highlighted in yellow are items that are reviewed prior to the visit through the submissions included in the online program approval application. The items in green are reviewed on site. If we have already approved something from the program approval application, then we do not need to review it again while we're on site. The only things we will be focusing on while on site are the items that we haven't looked at yet, which are highlighted in green on the technical assistance visit guide, or anything that was not approved in the online application prior to the on site visit. Your evidence verifying compliance may be in print or hard copy, but it may also be in an electronic format. We're happy to look at whichever format works best for you and your district. Let's quickly run through those green on-site items. All indicators for 4.0 community involvement are reviewed on-site. This includes 4.01, 4.02, and 4.03. Have documentation available to verify compliance with each of these items. If we're coming at a point in the current year when some of those things that take place annually may not have happened yet, it's okay not to have it yet for the current year, but you should be able to verify that it's happened in previous years since your last visit. 5.02 states that opportunities to increase knowledge of the education of gifted and talented students are provided for continuing and new school board members, school and district administrators, teachers, and support staff on a continuing and regular basis. This could be electronic or hard copies of presentation handouts, copies of informal professional development in the form of articles that have been shared with teachers uh, in their boxes through email or etc. Sign-in sheets from professional development that was related to the needs of gifted learners or emails that you sent encouraging other staff members to attend professional development that would help them meet the needs of gifted learners in their classrooms. You don't have to be the one who presented it. Think about that the standard says on a continuing and regular basis. Like other documentation reviewed on site, we'll look to see documentation since the last on-site visit. Please have available for review current certificates or proof of training for all courses being used to formally serve gifted students. This includes secondary content, pre-AP, uh, laying the foundation training if that's used to account for the pre-AP training, AP, additional training plans for pre-AP or AP classes. Also, if classroom teachers are the sole deliverers of whole group enrichment lessons, then proof of talents and limited training will need to be available for each of those teachers. Pre-AP and AP proof of training can be in the form of the printout or electronic copy of the records from the AP training database kept by our office. We will send these database records out to district GT coordinators during or before the first week of October so that you'll have it. Please be aware that we will use what you share as how you're serving your students on your program approval application as a guide for what training certificates and differentiation documentation we expect to see. It's often helpful to have a high school schedule printed off so that as teacher training is verified and as documentation required by 8.05 is reviewed, we can check it off as we see it. Next is 7.05. This is student files. 
will ask to see files for a few students who were placed in the gifted program and also for a few students who were not placed. Refer to the list on the guide that was compiled from program approval standards to see what pieces we'll be looking to see in each student's folder. Also, think about the other requirements from program approval standards and make sure that it's clear that any that apply to identification are clearly in place. For example, make sure signatures or initials on placement decision records meet the requirements of 7.03, which is a committee of at least five members chaired by a trained specialist in gifted education and including administrators, teachers, and or counselors. Next is 8.05. Remember, we'll use what you share as how you're serving your students on your program approval application as a guide for what differentiation documentation we will expect to see. It's often helpful to have a high school schedule printed off so that as teacher training is verified and as documentation required by 8.05 is reviewed, we can check it off as we see it. We will be checking for documentation for program options as required by pages 21 through 24 of the GT Rules or Program Approval Standards. The standards are available on the Gifted and Talented and Advanced Placement page of the ADE website, arkansaseded.gov. We need to see documentation for an option or options that show at least 150 minutes of direct instruction per week for identified students at each grade level being provided and also documentation of student responses for whole group enrichment in whatever grade levels it's being used. The Technical Assistance Visit Guide has page number notations if you're not sure where to look in GT standards to see exactly what's required. You should have documentation available for review to verify that your district has been consistently meeting GT standards since their last on-site visit. Next is 10.04, an evaluation instrument samples. We don't ask for these to be submitted with the online application, so please have samples of instruments ready to share with us when we come on site. These could be actual completed paper evaluations, or if you used an online format, a printed or electronic copy of those responses. They should be for different stakeholders and cover different program options spanning K-12. Refer to the description of evaluation found in the program approval standards for guidance in what is required. You'll know the results of your visit as we finish our time with you. We'll share the results verbally with you and your superintendent or their designee and your co-op GT specialist during the exit conference, and you'll receive formal written results via email after the visit. We aim to get those results to you approximately one month after your visit. What's included in our standards is what's minimally required for school districts in our state. If you're ever unsure about if something is required, then check standards and don't be afraid to ask questions when you're not sure about something. With technical assistance visits, we must verify that these minimum standards are met, but we love seeing all that you do to exceed minimums. Please be sure to share all the extras you do with us during our time with you because we don't always know about all the great things going on in your districts, but we want to. That's one of the reasons we love for the co-op GT specialists to attend the technical assistance visits for their member districts because they know about what great things you're doing and can help make sure we know about them too. Thank you for all you do for your students. If there's anything that our office can provide assistance with, please feel free to contact us. One opportunity available to gifted students in the state is Arkansas Governor School. Here is a link to the AGS website. Arkansas Governor School is one of the premier enrichment programs in the United States and a model for other states. The summer program is for students who have finished their junior year of high school and will be seniors when school begins. The program is free for the 400 students selected. The application process is online except for signature pages. Look for a commissioner's memo about applying to Arkansas Governor's School in October. Applications are due near the end of January and we hope all of you will work to recruit students to apply. Our goal is to have students from all 75 counties in the state represented. The whole basis of AGS greatly relies on the diversity of the students selected for the program. Please be an AGS advocate and truly encourage students to attend whether you are the one who works with the applications or not. If no one is designated within your district to work with the applicants, please nominate yourself to take on this new venture. It is time consuming at first, but it is definitely worth the time. If there are students in your school who have attended this past summer, have them help you in recruiting applicants for next summer. They can share their experience with the juniors and answer any questions. 
brochures are mailed out to the high school counselors, so be sure to get them from the counselor if you are the one working on recruiting. And there's always information online, including videos and typical weekly schedules from past years. Extra copies of the AGS promotional materials will be available at the AGEA conference in September if you need copies. The director of AGS is willing to travel to visit and promote the program, whether it be to a co-op with a group of GT coordinators or with students at individual high schools. His contact information is on your AGS file. Act 56 is legislation to recognize outstanding gifted programs in the state, but your program can't be recognized unless you complete the online application explaining how your program goes above and beyond the GT standards. The Commissioner's memo with a link to the form will go out in September and the applications are due the third Friday in December. The applications are read anonymously by the members of the Governor's Advisory Council on Gifted Education who determine which districts will receive the awards. Our state has made significant strides in increasing participation in advanced placement and in success on the exams because of the work done in building strong AP programs. Advanced placement and international baccalaureate classes provide academic services to identified secondary students. Here is an important page on the College Board website and I recommend that if you want to know more about AP, visit the College Board website, which is very helpful. AP coordinators receive an email with information they need for the school year. College Board conducts training for new AP coordinators and those who would like help. Please send us updated contact information if the AP coordinator at any high school is a different person from last year or if the AP coordinator changes during the school year. One thing you will want to do is let your AP teachers know about grants they can get for their classes. A commissioner's memo with information about how advanced placement teachers can apply for a grant of up to $1,000 to buy materials and equipment for their AP courses will be posted. The applications are due October 1st and schools will be notified in early November if they have received a grant. The money can be used for classroom materials, equipment, and technology. Schools with approved grants submit their paid invoices by the third Friday in December and receive the reimbursement money. Grant money is targeted at new courses, revised courses, and courses that need strengthening. If your district has a surplus of advanced placement incentive money, that money can be used to purchase the things AP teachers request in the grants. Districts receive AP incentive money based on the number of threes, fours, or fives scored on AP exams. The AP incentive money for exam scores must be used in the school's AP program. The money can be given to students who earned the threes, fours, or fives as an incentive to increase participation and success in AP. It can be used for parent meetings to explain pre-AP and AP or for teacher training, but the money should be spent. An annual report with details about expenditures of how the money is spent has to be completed online by each district before July 1st of each school year. The online report is accessed using try-in login information and is in the list of online forms under the GT program approval application. When a district has finished making purchases for the year, the report can be submitted. We strongly suggest schools submit before the end of the AP coordinator's contract. It is very hard for a new principal to come to work July 1st and be faced with completing a form he or she knows nothing about. The information on the form will be updated for the next school year when the amount of each district's AP incentive money is determined. Be sure the AP coordinator or school administrator goes in and renews the AP courses each high school offers or adds any new AP courses being offered for this school year on the College Board website with their login. If the school has a new administrator or AP coordinator, he or she will need to set up an account with the College Board to have the permission to renew courses. 
If any AP courses are offered through online providers, it is the school's responsibility to check whether the online teacher has current AP training certification and a syllabus approved in the College Board audit system for the course. When schools prepare their invoices after giving the AP exams, please be sure the three invoices generated are sent to the correct locations. The addresses are on the invoices that are generated. One invoice goes to the College Board. One invoice goes to the Arkansas Department of Education, and my address is on it. The third copy is the school's copy, and it should be kept on file for future reference. These invoices are due by June 15th each year, and a fine is assessed by the College Board if the invoice is late. It is important to submit AP exam invoices before you and the AP coordinator are off contract. As GT coordinators, you're concerned about AP and pre-AP teacher training records because those teachers have to have training every five years. We are planning to send each district a training report around October 1st when all the September trainings are complete. If any teacher in your district was trained out of state, you will need to mail or fax a copy of the certificate to us or that teacher will not be entered in the state database. In the test system, those teachers who serve their districts as GT coordinator and GT teacher have their own special rubric for evaluation. You can find out information about tests on the ADE website. Be sure you observe Act 146, which is the Military Dependence Compact with 20 other states for as seamless a transition from school to school as possible for military dependents. The Act specifically lists gifted and talented services and advanced placement in the list of services that should be continuous. There are several files that were included in the information for today that you will want to review. One helpful item is the GT information file which includes a list of important links. First is a link to the GT program approval application which is an online submission due by October 15th, but we will be happy to receive your application sooner. There is a link to the GT webpage on the ADE website where the application tutorials can be found. There is a link to the school demographic data that we use in reviewing applications. The fourth bullet contains information about scholarships for teachers who are adding GT licensure because GT is a teaching shortage area. There are links to a GT wiki and to a proto page with resources. There are links to information about the Duke TIP program, Economics Arkansas, a leadership curriculum, the National History B, AETN Professional Development Courses about GT, and Hoagies, which is a website with a great deal of GT information. Other files with important GT information include one for filing an additional licensure plan or ALP file, which outlines the process for adding GT licensure and what is required during the time an ALP is in place. There is a file for a memo requesting access to eSchool, Triend, and Student GPS for GT coordinators, and a file with information about how to add the GT designation on student transcripts. If you are not already a member of the GT Listserv, you will want to join, and one file provides the directions for joining. The Listserv is a great place to post information and ask questions of your colleagues. The state of Arkansas is fortunate to have so many dedicated GT coordinators and GT teachers around the state delivering the best services to gifted students in the country. We also have a great group of GT specialists around the state who are available to help you. They are a wonderful resource for you. We truly appreciate all that you do every day for gifted students, and we hope you have a wonderful year. Following a 10-minute break, we will resume the meeting using the live Zoom format so we can address questions and provide information from a number of sources for the upcoming school year.